Moshi Moshi my gamers and welcome back to Genshi Impact. After some discussions, go to Felto Felte which is to, to look for what has become the key to get into the bottom of the mystery. Today, we'll continue doing Sea Swing Story Quest. Greetings. Uh, sorry to impose, but I'm afraid we're here on urgent business and we're gonna need you to cooperate. The marsh is a phantom. Let me guess, you're investigating some more legal research? Not this time, no. We're looking for a researcher. Do you know where we might find Mr. Rawat? Mm, Rawat? Oh yeah, Mr. Handsome, right? He actually doesn't work on site here very often. There's a handful of researchers in the nearby area who know him pretty well, though. You can see what they know. Just a handful? Paimon figured he'd be the most popular guy around. Well, I guess you could say he's popular. At least on a superficial level. He's blessed with good looks, so he tends to make a good first impression on people. But in all his time here at the Fontaine Research Institute, I don't think he's ever had a single deep conversation about his research with his peers. That's no way to make real friends around here. He definitely didn't come across like a recluse at that product promotion. Oh, I don't find that weird at all. He definitely didn't strike me as the kind of guy who's uh, good at making friends. Really? Paimon couldn't tell. Must be a melusine perception thing. Okay, we should talk with his acquaintances. But we also need to check the research institute for any clues. Let's split up. It'll save us some time. Sure thing. We'll go ask around among the other researchers with Seedweed. Paimon suddenly kind of curious to know what everyone really thinks of him. Yeah. Okay. Um. So one like around outside? What? Not this guys? I mean, okay. Let's start with you, madam, with the buds. You need buds. Wait, let me, let me kill them off for a second as a jog. <laughs> nope. Okay. Are you Audrey? That's me. What is it? Are you close friends with Rawat? We're trying to find out where he is. Close friends? <clears throat> you mean because I told him I had feelings for him once? I doubt I'm the first or last at the Institute to make that mistake. Why would you single me out as a close friend? I should have known, really. Men like him, they just enjoy being surrounded by fawning women. They're not interested in a serious relationship. Okay. Uh, we were just kind of wondering if you might know where we can find him. Why would I know where he's at? I barely know him, and he probably doesn't even remember me. Ugh, this is getting annoying. Shall we go ask someone else? She knows her what better than she cares to admit. If we leave now, it might be a wasted opportunity. Maybe, but we're not going to get much out of her while she's in this state, are we? She's displaying symptoms common among people in love, if that's what you mean. But I know a cure. It's curable? <clears throat> oh, we're still no closer to finding Mr. Ruwat. Oh, by this point, he could be in grave danger. D danger? Wait, why are you looking for him again? Oh, she knows something. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah! The Marshal Say Phantom said that he's been targeted by some pretty bad people. We need to make sure he's safe. What? How has this happened? He seemed fine when I last saw him, and that was only a couple of days ago. Um, just happened to run into him, of course. Oh, I see, I see. Well, do you have any thoughts on where he might be right now? Okay, but this is purely out of concern for his safety. If he's not at the Institute, he might be at his mother's place. I heard she raised him alone, that they had it pretty tough financially, and these days she's housebound due to illness. He makes regular trips back home to check on her. Oh, okay. Do you know the address? Nope, sorry. I only found out the thing about his mother because it came up in conversation once. I was just trying to find out more about him. You know, so I could get to know him better. When I told him I had a crush on him, I offered to help him take care of his mother. 
And yeah, maybe that was a stupid idea, but did he really have to yell at me for it? It's like, fine, I can take no for an answer, but what's with the temper tantrum? Unbelievable. <sighs> These guys only want to show you their charming, well-groomed exterior. They can't stand it when a few home truths shine through. Uh, looks like her love syndrome is flaring up again. We need to find out Mr. Ruwat's mother's address. Let's check with the Marshal C officers when we regroup. Cool, sounds like a plan. Damn, she actually did a technique that she worked on against, against her. Okay, um, let's go to this guy next. Yo, I... How do you see a name? Hey there, are you in Teep? What do you want? We're here to ask about Rewat. Any idea where he might be? We were told you were pretty close with him. Close? <laughs> Not sure that's the word I'd use. He wouldn't even let me use his patent. Huh? It's been a good few days since I last saw him. I don't know where he's at. Go ask someone else. Um, would the patent in question happen to be related to the new skincare product he developed? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Butterfly do, or whatever he calls it. <laughs> I heard he made a tidy sum off of that one. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Keep going. Most of the other researchers here focus on mechanics, energy, stuff like that. I get why he wouldn't be interested in having anything to do with them, but I'm studying coatings. There's a huge overlap in our areas of research. Why would he refuse to work with me? I bought his product once and noticed it contains a unique substance that might have applications in coatings, too. If it worked out, I could probably make as much as he's making. Don't get me wrong. I had no intention of plagiarizing his work. I was hoping to get official permission to use his findings in my own research. Followed the proper procedure. It was all above board. I would have had to pay him a license fee and everything. But despite that, he turned me down not once, not twice, but three times. It's like he's vehemently opposed to the idea of anyone else making the kind of money he does. Huh. So is Rawat antisocial, or is this guy just jealous? Maybe both of the above. Well, it doesn't look like we're gonna get any info about Rawat's whereabouts from him. Let's go! Uh, wait, one second. Mr. Antip, next time you go shopping, you should buy some Buell fruits. Peel the skin, steep in water, then drink. It'll help calm your mood. Huh? Uh, yeah. Thanks. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, you're being a bitch. Um, if I'll see you, I'll be like, YOU CAN SHUT THE ass AND SHUT THE FUCK UP! Last person to talk to happens to be down here. <gasps> yeah, it's a dude again. Can we another girl? No? Okay. Sorry to bother you, sir, but are you Bertram? Who's asking? Just some concerned citizens helping out the Mara Shose Phantom with an investigation. We'd like to ask you about Rawat's whereabouts, if that's okay. We're told the two of you are pretty close. Not anymore, we're not. Turns out we don't see eye to eye. Oh yeah? What happened? <sighs> the thing about us researchers is, most of us do what we do for some sort of higher purpose. But not Rawat. All he cared about was how to commercialize his findings. He won't even let you work with him unless you sign a confidentiality agreement first. Also, he has better control over who gets which intellectual property rights. How are you supposed to get any meaningful research done working with a guy like that? Now that I've got my own technical solution for my compressor, I don't need to work with him anymore. So that's what Rawat is really like. We still like to know where to find him. Is that something you can help us with? Wait, you're... Yeah, I know you. You're the head nurse at the Fortress of Meripede. All right, then I'm happy to help you if I can. I respect the work you do. Medicine serves the highest purpose of all the sciences. Wow, turns out Seedwin's got some real clout. Thing is, I have no real way of knowing where he might be. I stopped working with him two months ago, and I've barely seen him since. But if you want my advice, I'd say go talk to the peddlers. There's a few he meets with every other day or so. Maybe they know where he's at. Peddlers? Yeah. Back when I was working with him, I noticed he met with them quite often. Wouldn't surprise me if they were involved in some shady business together. Because it seemed like they went out of their way to avoid discussing anything in my presence. The little I overheard was about manufacturing and selling pharmaceutical drugs. Like I said, he's all about the money. Drugs? Doesn't he work with skincare products? Do those count as drugs? Mmm, some. Actually. Who knows? I never cared to find out. He's the Mora Grubber, not me. Thank you. You've given us plenty to work with. Welcome. Goodbye. And may we both reach new heights in our scientific endeavors. 
We got something good this time. Three researchers. Let's head back to the meetup point. Yep, back inside. <sighs> climb up. <laughs> if this was with the ways, I would climb up way faster. But with this game, you gotta tap the space bar to go up faster. Plus, save some stamina too. Oh, then by the way. And then, yeah, we're gonna go talk with the. Wait, wait where was she? You know, Pinot started out thinking Rewat was a handsome researcher with a friendly and cheerful personality. It's such a surprise to learn that his peers have a different impression of him. So, what's your view of him now, Paimon? Hmm. A handsome researcher whose difficult upbringing turned him into a profit chaser with a chip on his shoulder? So, your thoughts about his appearance haven't changed at all? Well, his looks are kind of a big deal. At least in Paimon's opinion. How did such a handsome guy end up being so antisocial? Even with his difficult family background, it just doesn't make any sense. You can't judge a person solely based on their appearance. Head nurse. Traveler. I assume you've spoken with the researchers. What did you find out? You exchanged the intelligence you gathered. Bertram mentioned Rawat's involvement with some pharmaceutical merchants. Do you know if he's registered any pharmaceutical brands? Since he was a whistleblower on such a huge case, I ran a background check on him. Hmm. I don't remember there being any brands under his name. Hmm, how strange. If he was so focused on commercializing his research and averse to sharing his technology with others, why wouldn't he have registered his own brands? Maybe he and his business partners needed to avoid public scrutiny? You think he may have colluded with the gang? Hmm... Well, the crime was manufacture and sale of drugs. And that would certainly be in his wheelhouse. We can't rule it out. Isn't that pretty unlikely, though? He was the one who blew the whistle on them! Most children who come to me with tooth decay have suffered pain for a long time already. But they'll still try to hide the fact that they eat too many sweets. Grown-ups and children aren't so different in that regard. Hmm... If you say so! I saw him when he came to make his report. And I certainly didn't get the feeling that he was the type to collude with criminals. Perhaps it's more likely that they were coercing him. You mentioned that he comes from a poor family. So, it's possible that the criminals approached him, asking for academic support. Luring him in with the promise of riches. By the time he discovered who they really were, he was in too deep. They had leverage on him, so he was forced to keep working for them. <laughs> I've seen it happen many times before. That does make a lot of sense. It would definitely explain why he was so unwilling to cooperate with his fellow researchers. No wonder he's so unsociable. He must be on edge all the time with the gang of crooks breathing down his neck. In that case, the situation could be worse than we thought. If Rawat was working with the escaped inmates, they're sure to know more about his whereabouts than us. Oh, there's a good chance they'll get to him before we do. Based on the information we've gathered so far, he was last seen two days ago. If no one's seen him since, maybe we're... too late. Two days ago? So he went missing right after that product promotion! That was the same day he reported the criminals too. Not a good sign. Hmm. Don't worry, everyone. I believe we still have a chance. Since he disappeared right after blowing the whistle, it's likely that he's gone into hiding. Yeah, he must have been worried that they'd come for him. All the more reason to find him as soon as possible. The only lead we have at the moment is his mother's house, which you mentioned earlier. <sighs> Seath, think you can find the place? Yep. <laughs> When you register a brand, the Court of Fontaine requires you to provide a legal address. The one Rawat wrote down was in the outskirts of the city. That should be the place. Hm. Okay, then there's no time to lose. Let's move. Oh, let's go. It looks like a house, actually. Huh, is that what it is? <sighs> Alright, this should be the house. Mm, I'm pretty sure this was the address. <sighs> okay. I'll knock. Oh, kick down a door like, hey, you bitch! The FBI is here! Margay knocked several times. No answer. <gasps> Sounds like whoever's inside has restricted mobility. Well, it seems serious. 
Well, what's the fastest way to get this door open? Um, break the door down? Exactly, Paimon! <laughs> I'll handle it. Let the expert deal with it. There'll be a mountain of paperwork if we damage a citizen's property. That's true, though. We can't do it anyways. Let them do it. Calm down. Deep breaths. Remember your training. Control your strength. And... It's open! Seath, take a few people and lie in wait. Keep your eyes peeled for any activity around the house. The traveler, head nurse, and I will go inside. Yeah, 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 let's go. Hello? Anyone home? Oh, there. On the bed, there's an old lady. That's gotta be Rawat's mother, right? She doesn't look like she's in any state to be answering our questions, though. No. We could try, but she is very ill. We mustn't force it. <sighs> well, doesn't look like Rawat's here. She's the only one we can talk to. Yep. Allow me. Hello, ma'am. Might I ask if you're Rawat's mother? We are trying to locate him. <sighs> Hard of hearing, perhaps. Uh, does anyone have a picture of Rawat? I have one here. I'd like to show you a photo, ma'am. Is this your son? Do you know where he is? <laughs> Looks like this isn't gonna work after all. <sighs> well, looks like we're out of leads. If Rawat's not here, things are looking very bad for him. Is it possible he could have avoided returning here because he knew he'd be in danger? Maybe. Yeah, but most so, likely. Where do we look next? Maybe we should take another look at the Institute. Yes, so. I suggest we all return there now. We found a good amount of useful information the first time. But perhaps there's something we missed. This is our last hope. Sorry, officer. But could I stay here for a while? This patient requires some care. Of course. A traveler, stay with the head nurse. You're technically here as her assistant, after all. You got it. Also, I'd like some Mar Chausset members to stay as well and keep an eye on the area. Why is that? If Rawat knows how serious his mother's condition is, he will return. Got it. Okay. I'll tell the squad members in hiding to stay put and keep a lookout. Thanks for helping me out yet again, Traveler and Paimon. No problem. But when you say her condition is serious, do you mean... Yes. She's barely clinging on to life. Oh. Let me take care of a few things first. Could you pass me the towel over there? Yeah, of course. You go, Paimon. The towel is heavy! No, it's not. I can tell that her family has tried a lot of different treatment methods, including some very expensive medicines. Unfortunately, her condition is so multifaceted that a recovery looks all but impossible. See, Dreen? I'm on bets being a nurse must be pretty tough at times like this. Yes. It makes me a little sad. In Amelazine's eyes, a human's birth, aging, sickness, and death are as much a part of natural law as sunrise and sunset. But human medicine can defy that law to some extent. In that sense, it is a science of miracles. That is why I became fascinated with it in the first place. But it was only after I truly became a doctor that I realized miracles don't always happen. Even the greatest doctors cannot cure all diseases. That's true. See, Dream. Well, don't worry about me, Paimon. A doctor's duty is not to cure all diseases, but to treat whatever ailments they can. At the very least, I can lower her fever. That way she'll suffer less. And she might even be able to see her son. Yeah. All the more reason to find Rawat as soon as possible, even if we don't catch those crooks. <laughs> oh, her fever is getting worse. Could I get some hot water? Sure, we're on the case. Hmm. Hot water? Look for hot water? Uh... Oh, the kitchen? What? Okay. Hmm... 
I mean, why the first has them? This is the place where a family photo should be. Why has the first have been removed? Huh. That seems very illogical. Um, to the cabins. Found it. Fortunately, there's still some way you may have water here. Hmm? The cabin seems to be hidden in compartment. This is. <gasps> what? So, way into the underground lab to bring down the journal? What? Sea dream! Hold up. The strange trunk has been overdue, and some of those aren't in it. Are in it. Did what come back previously? Most likely. Huh? Yes, he's ring. Yeah, I know. Here you go. Found the hot water? Sure did. And look what else we found. Judging by this journal, it seems like Rawat has a private lab. There's a good chance he could be there right now. We gotta go tell Officer Morgan right away. Oh, that's great news. But hold on just a moment. The wet towel is ready. I'm giving you another injection. Are you feeling better now? <laughs> it's all right. We'll go bring him back. Please hang in there. Thank you. Oh. All the way back outside. So this is what his private lab is. Very interesting. Are we like going inside? Or is it outside mostly? It's Officer Morgan! They're already here! Don't you found out? That's interesting. We came as soon as we heard the news. <sighs> I can't believe we were so careless. The most crucial information of all was hiding right there, in that room. And we missed it. Don't blame yourself. Right now, we need to focus on finding a way in. There's a mechanical door over here! Hopefully the instructions in Rawat's journal will help us open it. I don't think they give instructions. Um, was it? It's open. Let's go in. Oh, it was that simple. That was hilarious. <laughs> now let's go in. With the aid of the clues you found in Watts' residence, you found a hidden underground laboratory. The truth behind Watts' disappearance in the case may be hidden with it. It's like the first mail pit again. But no, we're not. Damn. Oh, look at them one like that adorable. <gasps> Enemies! In here. Captain, up ahead! Those look like our fugitives! So they found this place too? Uh, like no of them double, double. Oh, no, 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 that's not. Let me get. There you go. Down. The time. I'm here, Siege Wayne. Come here, I'm here. Make them all wet. Mm. Oh, go explode. Surprise. Are these guys working with. What? I mean, why? Go for many. Uh, find these enemies feel about the same, regardless of what level they are. Cool. Go, Lenny! Put the magic cat explode. And, and you, ah! you almost fell over. He's like, oh, my nipple! Are you rubbing your nipple? Did you good? Captain, according to our list, many of the fugitives aren't accounted for. There may be others hiding deeper inside the facility. Ah, so these guys were just the lookout crew. The Mara Chose Phantom. How did they find this place? Wait, it's that guard from the fortress. That's right, I I'm on your side. Uh, I mean, th the Duke sent me. What's the matter, some sort of mix-up? Mr. Odilon, didn't I tell you a few days ago that you need to stop all field work until you've recovered? Ah, uh, well, you know... Gotta help his grace out. Share the load. <coughs> Officer Morgan, this man is an imposter. The real Mr. Odilon has no recent health issues. What? But I... Look, face swapping crew says right there. Looks like the head nurse was right about the face swapping method. Arrest them all. DuPont, stay here and keep guard. And watch the exit. If we're not back soon, call for reinforcements. Got it. Nice. Get these fakers. Stay over there. 
Oh, a chair! That's very nice. Okay. This and then my enemies. No. Just collect these items. But they're useless. Damn, did the Duke Lee send you? I don't think so. Oh, we're going down. We're going down, actually. They're actually, what's over here? Huh. I want to see how it was. If I want to see what's on the other side. And I'm suspecting to be some chess or two on those two. Oh, what's this one actually? What is this? So many jars. Was this some sort of production facility? This scent. It's probably the ingredients used to make butterfly do. No way. I knew it. Something beyond those products. He probably did something. How come they're all empty? Did it sell so well that he ran out of supplies? <sighs> How strange. Why would Rawat choose to manufacture a popular product like that in such a difficult to reach location? Given our suspicion that he may have been coerced into the illegal drug trade, I would have thought that any production facility we find here would be used for illicit purposes. Perhaps Butterfly Dew is itself an illegal drug. Do you have yeah. any evidence for that claim? No, just a guess. We need to find Rawat as soon as possible. He has all the answers we need. Understood. Well, let's not linger here. Let's go. Yeah, let's move. I'm still going forward and around this around the parts. Don't fall on Dale by accident. Hmm, that was what I want to collect too in the meantime. Let me collect those stuff. Oh, what's this? Been receiving less and less of the source field. Is it because of the flaw at all? At least we'll be able to make our schedule release after the bash is ready. Hmm, that seems. Huh, I don't know. Okay, let's just get over here. It's just more useless shit I'm touching. But material value, ooh, artifacts. Extras, I'll take. Hmm, there's probably more enemies Doesn't around. Like we're gonna get this door open. Let's find another way around. No, you're right, Paimon. Let's go this way. It does like a chest, but it's not. Climb up. And then... Ah, this one's close too! Hmm, what's with those carts and tracks? Oh, maybe it's one of those doors that opens when it senses cargo passing through. There's a loaded cart right over there. Let's bring it to the door and give it a try. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I like that. Okay. Push it. Um... Would you need to be eating over here? Let's actually give it a shot, actually. Uh... No, 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 no. Uh... Water we'll clockwards. Any difference if I push it this way? Probably not. That door is blocking the way. That's what I thought. It is worth to try anyways. Like, I'm gonna turn? Oh, what way? Uh, counter clockwise. Counter clockwise. And then... Move. I'm strong, guy! I've got a vision! Ooh, nice. That's open. Wait. Oh, what? It's just right there. That one's broken down. Can't do anything about it. Ooh, a chest. Oh, of course, enemies. Wild wow, them floats. You do some damage. You gotta make them come. Take the water, you angels! Let's see too. Oh my god, it's boy. Make them wet. Oh my god. Okay. Look, wow, chest. Very impressive. Um, what's over? Oh, you're so big, dude. Yeah, maybe back to small. There you go. Get the car moving. Um, hold up. 
if that way is locked in, that way... Hmm. I don't know if this way. It doesn't seem like it actually. Hold up, hold up. It's possible. Oh, sorry, excuse me. It's actually possible. No, it's not that way. Uh, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. I might be right, or it could be one. If that gate doesn't open. Oh, no, it does not. Hmm. It probably was both. That is my guess. So I'm gonna move this back. And let's get the clock moving. No, we'll take. We'll take counterclockwise. We'll take counter. One way again. Clockwise, clockwise. I'm trying to do that. But for this one though, uh, this is rotate upwards. And this could go. Uh, move. No. Oh my god, one way again. <laughs> Counter clockwise. There you go. Okay. Get the clock moving. Okay. Rotate. And now we push. Block button the cart? Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Then... Do you push his back? What? Hold up. Where's my... Hmm. If it's not that way, let's keep the car moving this way. What's the... What's the issue? Oh wait. Okay, let's push it back. Davis. What's the issue? If I can go that way. Hmm. Let's try this way. Anything? No? Hmm, it's confusing people. Perfect! Oh, look at that! So it's actually the on the box. I got it, I got it. Okay, I got it, I got it. So it's the one with the box. That's what it was, okay. Should have known better. So, whoa, what is this? This room's much smaller than the others. Judging by the implements on the table, this looks like a potion making lab. Uh, head nurse, over here. Robot's clothes? Why would he change here? <sighs> Perhaps hmm. they stripped him down, left the clothes behind, and disposed of him somewhere else? Yikes, Seedween, where did that come from? Oh, what a tragic way to go. Especially with such a bright future ahead of him. Uh, there's a path leading further on, Officer Morgan. Let's keep up the pace. Ooh, nice up. Yeah, hold up before we move on. Maybe lettuce. I mean cabbage. And iron chunks. I'm just gonna move around here before we move on. Okay. A adventurous pocket watch. Ooh, a book to read. The supply the supply of the soy's fuel has completely dried up. Do that means the final batch will fetch a good price. Find a new way to fund the liquid might be better use it. No, it's too late. Now we go this way. <gasps> a chest! Oh, there's some enemies. Oh no, enemies? Okay, enemies, okay. I guess we're good! Ooh. Open the door. Ooh. 
my goodness, how deep we're going in. Damn, look at this place. And that one's bigger. You see that, people? Hey, there's people over there. One by one, that's hilarious. Are you serious? You're telling us that within a day, our faces are going to rot like yours? Pontanian physiology changed dramatically after that great flood, and it's not as compatible with this face changing solution as before. The side effects are as you can see. Why didn't you say anything before we all used it? Look, my plan got you all out of prison, didn't it? You'd have much bigger problems to worry about right now if the Marshall Say Phantom found out about your other crimes. Consider an ugly mug getting off lightly. Ugh. You're just lucky we didn't leave you in there after you disappeared on us with no warning. We only let it slide because we're former partners. And now you have the gall to pull a stunt like this? Partners? Make no mistake, each of us is only looking out for himself. If you place too much trust in others, well, I'm afraid that's your problem. You hid things from me, too. Remember how you each had a spare potion? You kept quiet about it until we planned the prison break? Oh, and you didn't have a secret spare? Then do you want to explain how you melted your face off before all this? Guys, that's enough. Calm down. It is what it is. Arguing won't change anything. What's the plan, Parton? I'm assuming you brought us here for a reason? There is no plan. We followed him here on the promise of more juice. But it turns out, there ain't a drop here. Besides, what does it matter now anyway? He already said. Even if we did get our hands on more of that stuff, switching faces again solves nothing. They're still gonna melt off eventually. I said enough arguing. Potton, tell us the plan. <sighs> the most practical solution is to continue using the potion. Keep switching to a new face before the ulcers can start forming. Are you kidding me? This stuff was hard enough to get a hold of even when we had a supply. Now you're asking us to use it like skin lotion, after the flood all but wiped the supply out? Well, there is another option. But you'll have to make a deal with me first. Okay, now we're talking. What's the deal? I have a document I took from that researcher that details how to make a replacement. Just give me one bottle of the undiluted fluid, now get to work. Uh... What's the problem? I thought you always kept reserves. Or do you really just have one spare bottle each? What do you think? That we were shipping them into the fortress of Meripede by the basket load? Well then, say hello to never showing your marred faces in public again. Ugh, I've heard enough! Get him! Let's see if that document even exists! Freeze! Marshall say Phantom! What? Who let them in? Officer Morgan, before anything else, please find out Rawat's status. Rawat? I don't see him. Hand over the hostage now, if you want any chance of avoiding an extension to your sentences. <laughs> Spare us your condescending attempts to coax us back to our cells. You think we're looking to negotiate? Rawat is dead. Putin? Arrest them all! Don't let anyone get away! No way. You can't tell me they're dead right now! You motherfuckers! You did what to him?! Nuvalet! One person. Nuvalet! Oh my god! Nuvalet! You fuckers did what to him?! Come here, come here! Oh, you are fucked now. You are done after you, she string. Got it! Take the drugs, you bitch! Motherfucker! My turn. Oh, wait, no. Sorry for making that mine. Anyways, my turn. Get coming, coming, huh, bitch? Come on, me. Ouch. Unforgivable what they did. Nah, that really sucks. Then who was that guy that was promoting then? Was that really him? Oh, he died way before we found this. So, damn, I don't know. It's blasting away. Yo, yeah, was that? You miss. Oh my god, there's like two more of you. Okay. It's like a bit of Nouvellet, but because she's a doctor, she does that. But that one. 
Come, come, ha again. Keep blasting, keep blasting, keep blasting. Justice is Ow. One dead. We're done. Lenny, got it. Step right up. <sighs> Talk to Possum. Huh. Gotta say. I never expected to see the head nurse in combat. Some patients respond better to a more aggressive treatment plan. Did we get everyone? Captain, we finished the head count. Potten's missing. Over there! The door's closing! Uh oh. What a stud deal? <laughs> One group trying to arrest me, another trying to hunt me down. Good. I gotta kill two birds with one stone. Uh, how did he get up there? There must be a secret passage somewhere. Find it! Don't waste your energy. I already sealed it off. How naive. We have more people outside. If we're not back out by the agreed time, they'll come to our rescue. Well then, you'd better hope they get here in time. Like Duvalet? Oi. Um, Wesley? There's some kind of gas leaking from the pipes. Be careful, it's poisonous. This is our distribution center. Or we store the product derived from our source solution. We had to use special fire prevention methods to prevent contamination. The pipe network here was designed to emit a gas for firefighting. One little modification later, and it makes an efficient death trap. Why would you do this? Your partners are here too. Oh, please. If they can't supply what I need, they're of no further use to me. Besides, I can't have him exposing my potential whereabouts. He's a maniac! Come on, we gotta find a way to open that door! Go ahead, struggle in vain. Once the last of you croaks, no one will ever find me again. So long! Are you sure you're ready to leave, Potten? You haven't changed your dressing today. You can't cure my face, just give up. And what if I could? <laughs> nice try. You're just trying to stall me. Don't you worry about me. I'll find a way to cure my face once I get out of here. Oh, I doubt it. After all, Fontanians can no longer dissolve in primordial seawater. What? I, what, what the? I, how, how did you? The key component of the face-changing potion is the fluid left behind by dissolved Fontanians. It might look like ordinary water, but it has some unique elements in it. Before the flood, all Fontanians were oceanids, physiologically speaking. A potion made from that fluid could dissolve and reconstruct the face of a Fontanian in much the same way as Hydroidolins change form. Theoretically, it could give someone any appearance they wished. But since the flood, Fontanians have become true humans. They can no longer provide the source material for this potion, nor reap its benefits. Are you saying? This potion is made from Fontanians dissolved with primordial seawater? <sighs> then their crimes are far worse than I thought. How could you know all of this? No, wait. <laughs> of course! Well, well. So that's why you have a human appearance. It also means that I have a formula you're unaware of. <coughs> Oh, the air's getting thicker. It's getting hard to breathe. Like, fuck! Fuck! Huh? <laughs> I might get to make a deal today after all. Alright, keep talking. How do you oh. intend to give me the formula? Oh, it's not a formula, but a finished product. I have a bottle of it right here. What? When I tried Rawat's skincare product, I noticed it had a certain special component in it. So I had my friends gather some other ingredients for me, and sure enough, a little experimenting later, I'd produce the potion. I'm guessing his skincare lotion contains the fruits of your joint research? Huh. Impressive guesswork. Yeah, we were a supplier for some of the raw ingredients. <gasps> But it only contains a tiny amount of the active ingredient. The effect is minuscule compared to the undiluted fluid. Well, I found a way to reverse the dilution process, giving the skincare lotion a similar effect to the fluid it is derived from. That's impossible. 
If I tell you some of the ingredients, I think you can figure it out. First, you need to combine tinctured hydro phantasm tissue with transoceanic pearls at a ratio of around three to seven. Tainted hydro phantasms and transoceanic pearls? <sighs> I see. Can't believe I never thought of that. So, can we make a deal? Sounds good to me. There's a delivery pipeline beneath this window. Drop the potion in, and I'll release you all. Nope, not trusting you that easily. You're like those naughty kids who try to hide their illness. Open the sluice gate first, then I'll hand you the potion. <laughs> Even if you're not bluffing, your potion won't cure my face permanently. You really think you have any leverage here? I'm not closing the valve this time. Clock's ticking. Fine, then I'll just stand here with the potion in my hand. And when I faint from the poison, I'll drop it and it'll be destroyed. <laughs> no. Oh, I like that from her. Come on, you better pick, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let's run. Disable that sluice gate. Jam it. Don't let it close again. That's more like it. In that case, a promise is a promise. Head nurse, there's too much poison gas in here. We have to leave now. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, help. no, my sweet child, my melusine children is dying. Huh. That was too close. That button is a real nasty piece of work. Oh, don't be too quick to sit down. Moving around a little will help relieve the soreness. Same goes for you, traveler. Oh, but Paimon, you should be fine, right? <laughs> Flying fast is pretty tiring too, actually. Anyway, that's not important right now. Paimon's still shocked to learn that there's a whole criminal operation going on behind that skincare lotion. That's what I thought. Shame I ended up giving the improved version of Potten after finally making it for you. I'll make you some more. I promise. No, 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 please don't. Paimon doesn't want to use that stuff anymore. Still, it was a pretty good job that Paimon wanted to buy some in the first place, huh? It ended up saving everyone's lives. That's gotta count for something. Sea Shrink was the one doing the saving. Yeah. I'm always just kidding. Head nurse, I've done a final head count of our team and the criminals. Everyone's here and doing fine. We're ready to escort the fugitives back to the fortress of Meripede. It's a shame that we didn't find Rawat. At this point, I'm afraid he's probably deceased. <sighs> what a horrible bunch. Especially that Patton guy. If he hadn't made good on that deal, we'd all be dead because of him. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. I always keep a whole bunch of antidotes on me for emergencies, and one of them neutralizes that poison gas. We'd have been fine, even if you hadn't opened the gate. What? Then why did you give him the potion? If this is true, I must concur. Sorry to be blunt, but I think you made a bad decision by handing him that bottle. If he changes his appearance and flees Fontaine, it's unlikely that we'll ever find him. No matter how cooperative his accomplices are, when we question them. No, you don't understand. I gave him the potion precisely so we could be sure where he'll go next. What do you mean? Oh, we gotta hurry. She won't last much longer. <gasps> oh, right. Oh, look who's knocked down. Don't move a muscle. I might be short, but I pack a mean punch. Damn! Don't mess the small bitch. Captain? You're just in time. While I was lying in wait, I spotted this crook snooping around, trying to find a way in. So I detained him. <laughs> Your face. Oh, his face. Are you... Potten? So this is where you were heading, huh? What? This is how Potten looked before his face was marred. His current appearance matches the mugshot on his arrest warrant. <sighs> I see. Wait, so what's going on? Wasn't the whole point of the potion to disguise himself and escape Fontaine? Why would he change back to his original face and run right into our trap? Enough of this nonsense. Let me in. You better pipe down. There's an old lady in there who's very sick. No way are we letting a crook like you inside. <sighs> to heck with it. Listen to me. I'm Rawat. Th that's my mother in there. He's gotta be lying, right? Rawat was a victim in all this. He was forced into it against his will. How can he and this monster be the same person? Forced against his will? <laughs> that 
That's the funniest thing I've heard all day. Back when I was being coerced, everyone thought I was colluding of my own free will. And then when I actually became a criminal in my own right, you all suddenly thought I must be under duress. Amazing what a difference a handsome face makes. Just save us the speech. Explain yourself. You want an explanation? Fine. I'll tell it how it is. When I was just potting, the whole world treated me with contempt. Ew. What do you want? Get away from me. Women despise me. Collaborate? <laughs> You don't look like much of a researcher to me. My peers scorned me. Mr. Potten, was it? I'm most interested in your research. Consider my offer carefully. I doubt you'll find other investment opportunities. Only villains would work with me. You want out of the game? Forget about it. Turns out, I slipped up a little. Left your picture with some Mara Chaussee Phantom officers. Easy mistake to make. Now they've listed you as an accomplice and drawn up an arrest warrant. So I suggest you put any thoughts of running away to rest. If you get caught by the guards for being in the synth business, you ain't ever seeing the light of day again. <laughs> there was no way out for me until I could stop being potent. Disguise! Mr. Rawat, I... <laughs> um... <laughs> I have something I'd like to tell you. So you love a villain? I mean, it's kind of normal, but... Mm, no. I became popular with women. Why does that matter? This new potion you developed is fascinating. Genius, in fact. Would you consider working with me? I'd be happy to sign a licensing agreement. My peers looked up to me. Oh, I'm very interested in your research, sir. You must no doubt have offers from countless investors, uh, so far be it for me to ask for a full collaboration, per se. I merely wanted to express my interest. Uh, no pressure at all, naturally. And the villains even began to fear me. Becoming Rawat showed me what a superficial world we live in, but I did not hold a grudge. I actually knew it. Just say behind the those products made to he made. In my favor. Or so I thought. But alas, the world seemed bent on finding a reason to make me despise it. Mother, I'm back. How are you doing? Dying! Oh, who oh, oh, are you? I bought the best medicine Mora could buy, but nothing would cure her illness. In the end, I hoped she'd at least be able to see her son one last time before she passed, but when everyone else rejected me, the only person who cared about me was my mother. Then, when I became a rising star in the Fontaine Research Institute, I was unrecognizable to her. That is sad. I have to let her see me again. Even if it means donning my own wretched, ugly face. Well, is that enough explaining for you? Now do you understand? Let me inside already! Have you ever considered if you'll even be able to look your mother in the eyes? After what you've done, you found a way to completely change your identity. You could easily have escaped from them. But no. You chose to keep working with them. <laughs> Why would I want to give up on such a lucrative business? The profits were dozens of times that of the synth business, and it was all above board. So you kept being a villain just for the money? Villain? By what standard? Is doing evil deeds really what makes someone a villain in your eyes? Or does it all come down to the way they look? None of you saw a villain when I was wearing my other face, did you? You have no right to judge me! You're all just fake people living in a hypocritical world! I regret nothing! My mother would understand! You... You're a villain to the core! But especially that tongue! Honestly, I don't see a villain when I look at your current face either. Don't humor me. You don't seem surprised by my confession in the least. How long have you known the truth? I didn't know anything for sure until you chose to take that potion bottle and spare our lives. But if you're asking when I started suspecting you, it was the first time you came to see me at the infirmary. I had to confirm my suspicions. That's why I chose to join this investigation. Are you kidding me? A young promising researcher and a wretched criminal? 
What on earth gave you the idea that they could be one and the same person? Well, there were no visual clues. This potion's face-changing effects were very powerful. Even as a Melazine, I couldn't see through the disguise. But I believe I understand humanity a little better than most of my kind. Humans have certain fundamental qualities that do not change with their appearance. Fundamental qualities, huh? So you think you're the one who's seen through me, do you? Most people probably don't know this, but I think I can guess what your deal is. Melazine constitutions are very close to that of water. So it stands to reason that the potion should work on them, too. You used it yourself, didn't you? That's why you have a human appearance. Sea Dream? Yes, you're right. <laughs> I'll bet it was back in the days when Melazines were discriminated against because of their appearance. It was either carry on living in the gutters as part of an alien race cast out by humanity, or become the head nurse of the Fortress of Meripede, revered by all. Not a hard choice to make. It's a no-brainer. So you see, you and I were the same. And I'm the one who saw through you! That's not important right now. You came here to see your mother, didn't you? Well, I can grant you your wish. Huh? A head nurse. I'm not sure that's a good idea in his current state. Don't worry. Back in the warehouse when I traded the potion for our lives, I was doing it to test him. He was willing to risk sacrificing his only chance of escaping capture by opening the gate in exchange for the potion. Also, he could see his mother again. If nothing else, his concern for his mother is genuine. I see. So before you arrest him, please allow him to see his mother one last time. The Traveler and I will accompany him. You have nothing to worry about. All right. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> if I was Lenny, I'd be all sitting be like, Yeah, go inside. See your See your mama. See your mama. And then say goodbye. You go to jail. So yeah. Mom. It's me, Potten. Your son. You, you recognize me now, don't you? Why is your face like Demon Slayer, Tanjiro? I mean, not really, it's that scary there. <coughs> Mom, what's wrong? I'm sorry, but I have some bad news. I examined your mother last time we were here, and it appears that due to her prolonged fever, she's lost her eyesight. What? Your appearance no longer has any bearing on her ability to recognize you. But there are always other ways to remind our loved ones who we are. Wouldn't you say? No, 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 it can't be. P please, Mom, open your eyes. It's me, your son, Potten. If, if, if you really can't see my face, then here, take my hand. Tell me you feel your son's hand. Uh. I've done so much to get to this point. Please, you have to recognize me. <coughs> no, 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 no. The temperature of his palm must have changed. I'm sorry. It seems I couldn't bring him back to you after all. <sighs> It's you. Thank you. Of course. Mom. Why will you answer her and not me? Why? Why? Because fuck you! No more questions, Potten. She's gone. Mom. Oh. I'm sorry to say this, Potten, but you and I are not the same. Nah. <sighs> okay. Probably must be taken away by most of the Master Platoon. A day passes in the flash. You just toss him to the double and you go to jail, bitch! Hey, look, it's been days. Is that what I think it is? Yeah, there she is! The wait is over, everyone! The sale of our new skincare product, Romaritime Essence, will now begin. Another skincare promotion! And it's selling as fast as last time! 
Wonder what people would think if they knew what was in the last batch. Oh, Sea Dream's here too! Hey, Sea Dream! He's like, oh, hey guys, I'm back oh, again. Traveler Paimon, hello. Oh, I hope you two got a good rest yesterday after all your hard work. Of course! Nurse's uh -huh. orders, right? Anyway, are you here to take notes for your next article? Actually, I'm mostly here to help Officer Morgan wrap up yesterday's case. Ah, that reminds Paimon. That stuff sold like crazy, didn't it? Is it gonna cause huge problems? Nope, there's nothing to worry about. Unless modified, Butterfly Dew is an excellent skincare product that's completely safe to use. Besides, officers have already retrieved all Butterfly Dew purchased on the market. Now it's just a matter of disposal. After consulting Monsieur Nervulette, I came up with a way to neutralize any harmful effects. So it'll evaporate naturally without polluting water or soil. Wow, it's Sea Dream to the rescue again! Thank you for serving as our consultant, head nurse. All the butterfly dew we recovered has been disposed of, according to your instructions. Great! Good job, everyone! Also, you mentioned you wanted a copy of Rawat's interrogation records. Well, technically, Potten's records. Anyway, I have them with me. Here. After he saw his mother for the last time, it was like all his mental defenses came crashing down. He put up no resistance during the interrogation, and answered all our questions. We learned a lot. Apparently, the formula was something he discovered by chance while helping the criminal gang produce synth. Later, he came up with the idea to dilute it and use the resulting substance as a skincare product. Their supplier was Vache. But you could also argue that they were the ones doing him a favor. His operation helped Vache's gang dispose of an enormous amount of evidence. It made for a seamless collaboration. One man's trash was another man's treasure, and there were no loose ends. It's no wonder we never noticed what Potten's gang was up to. Vache again, huh? Is there still no end to the harm he caused? Make no mistake. The crimes of Vache and his accomplices will come to an end. It's only a matter of time. Since the Flood cut off their supply of primordial seawater, they've been forced to resort to riskier methods, like using their private reserve to attack people on the street. Naturally, those attempts all ended in failure. After receiving numerous reports, we were able to zero in on the gang and eventually round them up. That sounds more like it. Based on what he told us in his confession, we pretty much had him backed into a corner even though he made a point of distancing himself from the gang while disguised as Rawat. He tried to throw us off his tail by reporting his accomplices, giving him enough time to transform back into Potten and see his mother one last time. But there was one thing he hadn't anticipated. Even though Potten had been missing for a long time, we were very much still on the lookout for him. So the moment he appeared in public after changing back to his original appearance, we caught him. So he tried this once before, huh? Guess he really did want his mother to see him again. But in the end... Looking at the interrogation records, it seems like he spent the first sum of money he earned as reward on his mother's treatment. Yes. Which is why I suspect that his initial motive for using the potion was not personal greed, but a desire to become somebody who had the power to save her. Even so, he went too far. In the end, he got what he deserved. I understand. Thank you for bringing me these records. Why did you want them anyway? Potten was one of my patients, so I need to put together a medical file for him. My teacher always stressed that a person's life experiences are just as important to their file as their medical history. Why are you still treating him like your patient? Isn't he kind of beyond redemption now? Well, that may be true, but a patient is a patient regardless of the choices that bring them to my care. Oh, one last thing, head nurse. Please keep everything you know about this potion a secret. It would be for the best if most of Fontaine knows nothing of its existence. I know my fellow officers and I will be able to sleep easier if that's the case. Of course, not to worry. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. I'll take my leave then. So, Sea Dream, did you really use that potion yourself? Why do you sound so surprised, Paimon? I told you all about it. It was quite a while ago now. Uh, 
You mean that story about the witch and the potion? So it was really, actually, genuinely a true story? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it really, actually, genuinely was. But... The boss is all making that potion. I know. Uh, there are some secrets I can't tell anyone about. Um, but considering everything we've been through together, I know I can trust you with them. Before I tell you, though, could you follow me somewhere? I want to pay my respects to an old friend. Of course! Old friend that's dead or alive? Oh my god! What? Nubla and Rosalie doing they're together? What's the big deal? That's, um, okay. Oh, Nervalette and Risley, they're here too. The boy kissing. Traveler, Paimon. I trust all has been going well for you. Yeah, people like, oh, they're kissing. They're totally kissing. They're jumping off each other. Mash it or strain the game, but fetishize the gaze you want. Big news, everyone. The Udex is out of his office on important business. Hmm? Is that genuinely something people would consider big news <laughs> why wouldn't they important business is a big deal ah <laughs> yes you're quite right when someone you care about requires emotional support <coughs> for them at the emotional right place is of the utmost importance after reading the marishal say phantom's reports i had a feeling a trip here might be in order take note that my friends is how monsieur nervillet shows that he cares we're both here for the same purpose actually to accompany Siege Wayne as she pays her respects to her late teacher. So the old oh, friend okay. she mentioned was her teacher then? The witch? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Paimon didn't mean to be rude. It's only because Siege Wayne calls her that all the time, so... I doubt she considers that title to be offensive, Paimon. Don't worry. Indeed. In fact, I believe Siege Wayne would take it as a sign of affection. She has spoken of this doctor on many occasions, and it sounds like she was a truly generous individual. In those days, many people harbored prejudices against Melusines. She was the only teacher willing to take Sijuin on as a student. Wow! It's really nice of you two to be here for Sijuin. Guess you guys really look out for your younger colleagues, huh? Younger colleague? Well, that might be true for the Udex, but I'm not sure I can say the same. Sijuin served a sentence in the Fortress of Meripede hundreds of years ago. And after she did her time, she decided to stick around. She's been an integral part of our administration ever since. Strictly speaking, the head nurse has been around longer than most people in the fortress, myself included. Pretty sure that makes me the younger colleague. She served a sentence? She committed a crime? Yes. Long before I became Udex, there was an ancient law in Fontaine that prohibited any attempt to transform another species into a human. Initially, I and most researchers believe this law to have been imposed due to ethical concerns. But now, it seems more likely that the law was nothing more than an insurance policy. A way for Egeria to ensure that her people would remain insulated from the truth, thus enabling them to lead more straightforward, happier lives. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. Sijuin had her reasons for choosing to obtain a human form, but the act was nonetheless in clear violation of the law. Could you tell us a little bit more about what happened back then? Certainly. Sijuin does not object to her close friends learning about her history. In fact, I first learned of it myself because she confessed the truth to me of her own volition. Okay. Tell us a story. Like another cussing. with their daughter so ill, they kicked you out? <sighs> Stubborn as always. And prejudice isn't a disease I can cure either. <sighs> Shame that I don't have the energy to get over there. You're laughable, you old witch. You want to save everyone in Fontaine, but you can't even save the patient before you. Master, what are you? I discovered a strange disease, one I suspect that every Fontanian suffers from. But without witnesses or proof, no one will believe me. I had no choice but to experiment on myself to find a cure. But I hit a wall. And as you can see, it took a wretched toll on me. Then I'll find a cure for you. Then you can go cure her. There's no need. I am beyond saving now. There's nothing you can do. But, Master... As I said before, 
A doctor's duty is to treat whatever ailments they can. I know, but they don't trust me at all. <coughs> <sighs> that girl. She's your first ever patient, isn't she? Tell me, what cost are you willing to bear to see her cured? I'll do whatever it takes. Even if it means breaking the law and being punished for it? As long as I don't hurt anyone. Yes. <laughs> Spoken like a true student of mine, then I shall make one more final gamble. And see my experiment through to its end. Leave me for now, and come back in two hours. If I am able to work this miracle, then I will have found a way to save all Fontanians, and I shall be able to help you treat that girl. If not, then it means there is one more disease in this world that I cannot treat. In that case, do not come looking for me. I will leave you a parting gift. An accidental discovery happened upon through my study of this strange disease. It has little use, but it will at least help you cure this one patient you can reach. <laughs> okay, let's see how this goes next. Oh, it's how it ends. Sisween returned, the miracle had not occurred. She found a potion bottle and a note on the table. After using the potion as instructed, she gained her current form, breaking Fontaine's law in the process. And after I had confirmed the veracity of the events, I gave my verdict. So that's what happened. Hmm. Her teacher sacrificed herself. I fear Sijuin only understood the full story after the truth about the dissolution of Fontanians was uncovered. When I reflected on all this with that knowledge in hand, I felt a deep sense of regret. As I use the law to uphold justice, there are times when I cannot help but acknowledge its ruthlessness. After the final details of the events surrounding Sijuin's transformation came to light, I checked several sources and, thankfully, the legal code does not require Sijuin to shoulder any additional punishment. Hmm. wonder how she feels about all this. Since she invited you here, I imagine she intends to speak of these matters with you, no? Hmm. All right, Ooh, let's go see her over there now. They're probably going to kiss and fuck in the background while I'm talking with Caesaring. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, you're here. I was talking to your boys. The old friend I mentioned was my teacher. When she passed, her body was nowhere to be found. All that's left of her is an empty tomb. And even that's deep underwater now. Caesaring. The witch who gave you the magic potion, she was your teacher, wasn't she? <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Nervillette filled you in. After learning the truth, it must have been hard to process, huh? Well, to be honest, after I realized what really happened that night, my first thought was that it kind of made sense. It seemed exactly like the sort of thing she would do. What? She was planning to sacrifice herself and never told you. That's just who she was. If lying is what it took to get a kid to take their medicine, then that's what she'd do. It truly, Og Doctor. All right, but why did you turn yourself in? I broke the law. Simple as that. My teacher made her choice, and I made mine. True. It's just... The way Potten framed it when he was asking you all those questions... It made Paimon really mad. You're not like him at all, and everything Nervalette said confirms that. And yet, you were still convicted and thrown in prison. It just feels so unfair. <laughs> unfair? I happen to think just the opposite. If I hadn't served that time, I'm not sure I would have been able to stay strong when he was questioning me. What makes you say that? I knew you'd be curious. Let me tell you a story. Another one? Okay. You tell the us. verdict came down. This Melazine is guilty. The Udex defended the authority of Fontaine Law, but he did not confiscate the Melazine's medical kit. And so, the Fortress of Meripede gained a new little doctor. She still wore her hood and raincoat, even though it never rained in the fortress. Perhaps thanks to her human appearance, 
No one refused her treatment. She treated more and more patients, and her sentence grew ever shorter. Finally, the people of the fortress could not live without her, and though her sentence ended, she did not leave them either. Then one day, she received an invitation from the outside world. The location seemed familiar, and when she arrived, an old lady was waiting for her. She saw right through the Melazine's disguise, but didn't reveal it. Instead, she asked a question. Tell me, why do you think you gained the respect of so many people, despite being a Melazine? Because... I look like a human? <laughs> It's been 50 years, Sijuin, and you haven't aged a day. I think everyone knows you are not human. I finally found you, after all these years. I still remember, you know. It was you who saved me that night. <gasps> but... how? I was no longer a Melazine by then. Does it really matter if you're human or Melazine? Oh, that's a sweet moon right there. I remember the warmth of your palm. It's quite unmistakable. That is. Mm, I feel like tearing what? up. It hasn't changed one bit. No, it hasn't. You don't have to hide anymore, Sijuin. These days. Everyone wants to make friends with Melusines. And I think that it's all because of you. I'm sorry I couldn't say this until now. But thank you, Dr. Melusine. Now that's an ending Paimon can get behind. Yay. After hearing everything Potten said, I wanted to tell him that it didn't matter who he looked like on the outside. But it was too late. The warmth in his palm had already disappeared. I tried to treat him, but the roots of his problem had nothing to do with his face. No need to feel too bad for him. I for understand. him! Thanks, you two. I appreciate you being here for me while I talk this through. Oh, it's nothing. Our pleasure. Oh, there's one more reason I invited you here. It's about time I finally give you what I promised. Oh! In order to restore the appearances of the face swapping victims, the Marishesi Phantom gave me special permission to make a few bottles of that potion. And I made one extra just for you two. Uh, we don't need it though. Shouldn't we destroy it? Well, even if you chose to destroy it, I still thought I should give it to you first. You two did so much for me. How could I break my promise? Well, fair enough, but anyway... Hyman's definitely not interested in this stuff anymore. Still, if this is the very last bottle in all of Tevat, getting rid of it would feel like kind of a waste. Maybe we can give it a special meaning somehow. Oh, Paimon's got it! Melusine physiology wasn't affected by the Great Flood, right? So that means the potion should have a permanent effect on you! In that case, what do you say, Seedween? Ever thought about transforming back to the way you used to look? After all, from a Melusine point of view, Paimon bets Melusines look the cutest of all! Paimon! Paimon, after everything, do you really think it matters whether I'm Melusine or a human? Uh, well, what was Paimon thinking? You made up your mind a long time ago! Yeah, let's just destroy this thing. Leave it to me. Just slams on the ground. Well, she didn't just slam on the ground. Just put an ale. They bless these two of the final sisters. Well, they better. But well, that's the end of the storyline. So, what is this to be continued? Does that mean there's be a part two to this of the story quest? Are those two still? Oh no, they're long gone. They are long gone. <laughs> Let's talk to you before we go. I'd like to stay here with my teacher for a little longer. Um. Okay, you can stay there. Oh, right, I'm gonna go there. Last subscribe. I'll see you on the side.